recognize Horshid. And they said, ah, the mother of, of Fatima? Yes, Horshid. And they took us to Horshid's house and then... And she hadn't aged a day. She looked exactly <laughs> like <laughs> Horshid. Exactly. Ago. Healthy life. <laughs> exactly, in, in the village. And she, of course, was in complete shock. Because here, 30 years later, out of the sky drops her American family in the middle of Tudash, which is a village of, you know, maybe 2,000 people. Uh -huh. And so she was just serving chai and gauze and everything. Amazing. And, Amazing. and uh, the, one of the young children, who was a nephew-in-law, mm -hmm. said, Oh, Hassan and Fadi, yes, they, they moved there in Isfahan. I have their phone number. So I picked up the phone, and I started to call, and I get uh, the number rings, and I hear this voice, hello, and I say, Fatima, she says, who's the, what, ha, ha, and I said, this is Teddy, and all of a sudden, the crash, wow. and some seconds go by, and then I hear her voice again, hello, and I said, Fatima, what happened, she says, I dropped the phone, <laughs> <laughs> I was dying, <laughs> so we go to Isfahan. And we're at this stage, we're just racing in the minivan. Oh. We arrive at Isfahan, at the hotel. They come to meet us, and the first thing my brother does is he, my youngest brother, he runs up and he hugs the doorman. The doorman. He, th <laughs> he thought the doorman was Hassan. And in, in fairness to him, the doorman did look Looked like, like Hassan awesome. might have looked to a, to a 10 year old kid. Sure. But, uh, but what a reunion, what a reunion. And then, of course, Fatima and Hassan, they brought all of the flowers for the, you know, all the gold for, for my mother to welcome her back. Uh, yeah, and the complete then the feast and the began. pictures. And, and, the, and amid all of the laughter, the tears, and the old story, Hassan just kept saying, yeah. I never forget you. I, I never, never forget, forget you. you. I never forget never you. And he said this to my father and to me. Yes. Yeah, and it, yeah. Amazing. And we began these huge feasts one day after the other, after the other. Oh, you stayed. And before, oh, we stayed there four <laughs> days. And the one thing I had been warned by a friend on the side, he said, one thing you better be careful in Iran. Baba, if you're not ready for this, you're really in trouble. I said, what's that? He said, excessive hospitality. <laughs> and this is what happened. We all put on 10 pounds. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's all a, a warning to any tourists coming to Iran. Sure. Too much hospitality. What was Hassan doing all these years? Actually, he was using a lot of the skills he learned with, with mom in the kitchen. He, he was a chef at one of the best hotels in Isfahan. That's and nice. he also went on the Hajj. The oh, Hajj. Hajji. Eight, eight times. Eight times. Because he could cook for 300 people. So they always asked him to come on Hajj so he could prepare the food for everyone. Oh. So if you want to be a Hajji, that's the best way to get there. <laughs> you learn how to cook well. But it was very special for us, too, is we discovered that, obviously, Hassan had survived the war, as all his children, all his five boys. And this was, for us, always a big question in our hearts. What happened in the war? Are they alive? Will we find them? And we were haunted by this. So for us, it was an elation. I mean, not only had we met a Pers our Persian family and made all the connections, but even the photographs, they brought photographs out that they had kept of us as we had kept of them, you know, and, and there was this exchange so powerful. And then we met the grandsons. Enormous and grandchildren. Happy and Incredible. Happy. Well, we, we felt like we had come That's home. Very touching. We had come <laughs> home, you know. Yeah. So tell me, where did you stay? In